In this video, we're going to look at short division or the bus stop method for non-calculated division. Let's look at a question. We're asked to share £112 between five people. And this might be a non-calculated question. When we hear the word share, we're talking about division. Essentially, this is saying how many times does five go into 112? So setting this up, I'm going to now put five on the outside and I'm going to put 112 on the inside. So setting up my bus stop method, five on the outside, 112 on the inside. I'm going to put the decimal place here and then I'm going to have some zeros. I might need more zeros for other numbers. Three should be okay for now. What I'm simply going to do is look now to see if five goes into one. The answer is no. I'm going to therefore put here zero. So my first question is, does five go into one? Next question is, if it doesn't go into one, does it go into 11? Yes, five goes into 11 twice, as we would get 10. So I'm going to put in two, and that leaves me with a remainder one, which I'd put just here. I now ask myself, does five go into 12? The answer is yes it does, it goes in twice as that gives us 10 and we're left now with a remainder of 2. I then put the 2 just here. My next question is does 5 go into 20? The answer is yes and it goes in exactly 4 times. So now it's gone in exactly 4 times, we can see that there's going to be no remainder and I can finish my division. So this gives us 0, 22.4. So I could write this as 22.4. So if I wanted to give this now correct in terms of the pounds, it's going to be 22 pounds and 40 pence. So I'm using now short division or the bus stop method to find this problem. If you want to rewrite that and you can write it as 112 divided by 5, you can look that 5 is going on the outside 112 is going on the inside. Okay, we're asked to write 5 eighths as a decimal. Now you might be comfortable working this out, but if not, we can use now short division. So setting this up, this time 8 is going to go on the outside. We're saying how many times does 8 go into 5? So just writing this out, 8 is going to go on the outside. Then we're going to have 5, we will have the decimal point, and I'll put some zeros on. So just loading this up with zeros. The first question is, does 8 go into 5? The answer is no, so we put a 0. And I ask myself now, does it go into 50? It will go into 50, and it will go in 6 times. 6 times by 8 is 48, so we'll go in 6 times, remainder 2. My next question is, does it go into 20? The answer is yes, it does. It goes in twice. That gives us 16. And we have a remainder of 4. My next question, does it go into now 40? The answer is yes, it goes in exactly 5 times. And we can see from there, no remainder, so we finished our division. So we can say that 5 eighths as a decimal is going to be equal to 0 0.625. Now if we think about this, is this a logical answer? Well I know that one quarter is going to be equal to 0 0.25. One eighth is going to be half of that, which is going to be 0 0.125. So if I do five eighths, which is five times by one eighth, that's going to give me five lots of this value, which will be 0 0.625. So we've used short division of the bus stop method to write a fraction as a decimal. OK, let's look at another one. We're asked to find the value now of 2, I think we should say of 2, value of 2 divided by 7. So what we're looking at now is 2 divided by 7. How many times does 7 go in to 2? So we set this up. So with our bus stop, we have now the following. 7 is going to go on the outside. So we put 7 on the outside. We put 2 on the inside. 
so it's going to be 2 point, then we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. Does 7 go into 2? The answer is no. I then ask myself, does 7 go into 20? Yes, it does. It will go in twice. That gives me 14, and that leaves me a remainder of 6. Does 7 go into 60? Well, 8 times by 7 is 56, so we'd have 8, and we'd have a remainder of 4. Does 7 go into 40? It will go in 5 times with a remainder of 5. Does 7 go into 50? Well, 7 sevens is 49, so it will go in 7 times with a remainder of 1. I then put my 1 here. Does 7 go into 10? The answer is yes, it does. It goes in once with a remainder of 3. I can now see that I'm going to need some more zeros, so just adding these on. Does 7 go into 30? The answer is yes, it does. It's going to go in 4 times, and we're going to have a remainder of 2. At this stage, I say to myself, does 7 go into 20? The answer is 2, and we're going to have a remainder of 6. At this stage, you might say to yourself, hang on a moment, we've been here before. And the answer is, yes, we have. So if I put this one in, that's going to be the 8 again, and we're going to be left with now the 5. We're going to have the 5, and that's going to leave us with the 1. What we can see here is that this is going to keep going. We have what we call a recurring decimal. The pattern starts at 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, and then it's going to repeat. So if I keep going, the next one I'm going to get 7, then 1, then 4, then it's going to start again. So we can say that 2 divided by 7 is going to be 0 0.285714, and our recurring pattern starts here, and it finishes here. So if you want to look at that on a calculator, let's do 2 divided by 7. 2 divided by 7 will give us now 0 0.285714, 2857 and so on and so forth and that will keep going. So that's now writing that particular division now as a recurring decimal. It just keeps going. Okay, let's try another one. Calculate 156 divided by 12. So this time we've got a double digit number. So on the outside I need my 12, so let's put this in. And on the inside, we're going to have 156. So just writing this in, we're going to have now 12. Then we're going to have 156. I'm going to put my decimal place. And then I'll load up some zeros. As we saw before, we can add zeros as we go. So does 12 go into 1? The answer is clearly not. Does it go into 15? Yes, it does. It will go in once. And we will have now a remainder. So we can see it's going to give us now a remainder of 3. At this stage I say to myself now does the 12 go into 36? The answer is going to be 3. So we end up now with 3 and at this stage we have no remainder and we finish our division. So we can say 156 divided by 12 is going to give us 13. Now think about this reasonably. 12 times by 12, or 12 squared, is 144. So if I did 13 times by 12, I'm simply adding another 12 on, and I'd end up with 156. So from here, if you want, you can put 13.0, but essentially it gives us a whole number or integer value. So that is using now short division, or the bus stop method, to divide numbers.